Hey, poker people, it's Sky Matsuhashi, and this is the Smart Poker Study Podcast. In last week's math-based episode number 140, I discussed using implied odds to make positive EV decisions both pre- and post-flop. Hey, poker people. Wow, it's June already. I love June because that means the WSOP returns to Las Vegas. Um, I'm actually heading there today, and I'm bringing my wife this time. We'll be staying, uh, you know, in a hotel out there. It'll be nice. Uh, she'll be doing a lot of gambling while I'm playing some poker and stuff. But I will be playing in day 1A of the Colossus. Cards will be in the air Friday, 10 a.m. sharp, and I will be there with bells on. Come and find me. Also, I am still holding that little meetup with whoever may be in town for the series. Uh, hit me up via Twitter or email to let me know you're coming, but it'll be at the Gold Coast Casino Bowling Alley at 2 p.m. on Saturday the 3rd. If you're playing in... um. You know, in a tournament at that time, I'm sorry, but this is the best time for me to have it. I'm playing, you know, day one, a Friday, hopefully be making day two on Monday. So Saturday is a perfect time to have a little get together. I'll have a pitcher or two of beer waiting for y'all and uh, maybe some nice Pinot Noir, if that's what you're into as well. My wife will be there with me. You can meet her. Um, so getting back to the Colossus, I am really looking forward to it. I played in it last year. It was a lot of fun, but I didn't cash. This year, the goal is, I guess, to right the ship, and I'm striving for a deep run. At a minimum, I am going to cash this year, but going for that deep run, going for first place. I don't know if it's a million dollars guaranteed again, but wouldn't that be awesome? You know, normally, I am an online MTT player, so the live realm, it's not one where I'm really super comfortable with just yet, You know, I'm comfortable with playing and choosing the right cards and going to post-flop and making bets and calls and stuff like that. But it's just, you know, playing live is a different realm than online. I'm just so used to online seeing stack sizes right there uh, of not just me, but all of my opponents see the exact size of the pot. Um, Yeah, so it's it's just a different beast altogether. So to help me with my live tournament play, I have an Evernote document that I created to... It helps me to stay focused on the most important things at the table. So in today's episode, I'm going to discuss this document that I use... um, at the table or, you know, before I play and as I play, I refer to it, but I'll go over it line by line here and I'll explain each part of it as I go. So please visit the show notes page where you can copy and use my document if you'd like. I've got the whole thing right there for you at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod one four one. Alrighty, let's get to it. Gambate. And now for our feature presentation. All right, so real quick before we get to that document, uh, knowing that I was going to play in the Colossus this year, I did a little bit of preparing ahead of time. You know, I played in some local smaller buy-in tournaments, just uh, $60, $70, or like uh, I think one was $160 tournaments, just to get comfortable with the whole live realm again. And I really recommend if you're going to the WSOP or before any online series, you know, uh, play some local tournaments, the smaller buy-ins, just to get your comfort up again, you know? And um, when you are traveling as I'm going to be doing going to Vegas. As soon as I get there, I'm going to play a couple sit and goes, maybe even some cash just to get a feel for playing in Vegas at at new poker rooms. Not exactly new because I played there before, but at a room that I haven't played in for an entire year, get a feel for it again, get comfortable uh, uh, before I play in the Friday 10 a.m. tournament, the big one that I'm really focused on. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and that's what I have done in preparation for the tournament. So let's get to that Evernote document that I use uh, to help me prepare for my live tournaments. So I'm just going to go line by line. I'll say what it is in my document, and then I'll give it a little explanation. So the first line is, Ask yourself, what's the best way to play this hand right now? Of course, with tournaments and with cash games, you want to make the best decisions with every single hand you're dealt. Whatever happened the last hand doesn't matter. I'm dealt this new hand right now. And the best way to play, whatever that is, deserves my full attention, my full focus on this hand right now in order to make the most positive EV decisions. Whoever makes the most positive EV decisions over time, of course, luck plays a small factor. But the more positive decisions you make, positive EV decisions you make, the more likely you'll make it deep and win tournaments and win money in poker. So that's why this line is here. The next line, it says three things. Number one, sit up. Number two, take a breath. 
Number three, look left. Now, these are all things that I got. Uh, it is uh, Tommy Angelo's recommendations for when you're dealt a hand at the table. So the first thing is you want to sit up, have good posture, pay attention to what's going around you. The second thing is take a breath. That kind of centers you and focuses your thoughts on what you're doing right now. And the third is to look left. Now, you look left before you actually look at your cards because sometimes your opponents will choreograph what they're about to do. If they start to reach for chips, you can assume they're going to bet. If they look like, if you've seen them before, look like, uh, you know, playing with their cards like they're going to fold, great, they're probably going to fold. You can open and steal position kind of a thing. The next line is, move a chip on your stack as the dealer shuffles. This is something else I got from Tommy Angelo. It's kind of a way to stay focused and to kind of remind yourself to be in the moment. If you can move one chip from one stack to another, every single hand as you play a cash session or a tournament, you're obviously paying attention and you're focused to the focused on the action. If you forget to do it five hands in a row, then you're probably not focused. Maybe your mind is uh, just on other things. You're looking up at the sports on the television up above you, whatever the case is. The next line is tilting or unfocused, with a question mark, of course. Pick a focal point, six to seven breaths. Tell yourself, the next hand deserves my full attention. And this is something I got very recently from Dr. Trisha Cardner on her own podcast. Um, if you are starting to feel unfocused or tilted at the table, she recommends to pick a focal point in the room, something that you can focus on to kind of get yourself away from the hand that was just dealt, whatever's tilting you, whatever's setting you on edge. And the six two seven breaths, I can't remember what she calls those exactly, but it's basically take a breath in for six seconds, hold it for two, and let it out for seven seconds. It's a way to center your breathing and center your emotions, or not center, calm your emotions, I guess. And then tell yourself, of course, the next hand deserves my full attention. I need to be in the moment right here making the best decisions possible. The next line on my document is what would a pro do? Pros ain't scared. A lot of times in tournaments for myself, I'm actually, um, I don't want to bust and I start to play kind of scared poker. I see a hand in a good spot to three bet or I see a good spot to open, but I don't do it because I'm only on 12 blinds, for example. And I don't want to go to nine or, or I don't want to risk my whole 25 big blind stack so close to the bubble, whatever it is. The reason why this line is here is because pros are not scared. They don't play scared. If they see a good opportunity, they take it. And that's what I need to do. If it's positive EV, I've got to do it. Results don't matter. If I get busted out early, so be it as long as I made the right play. The next line is, get frisky in the early stages, but choose good cards and play in position. This is basically saying that, hey, it's okay to play loose. Play the 10-8 suited, the 10-9 suited, the pocket fours, uh, the king jack suited. Play that kind of stuff, but stick with the suited cards. You know, good strong Broadway, strong aces, pocket pairs and stuff, and try to play in position. Don't call out of the blind so quickly unless the price is like really good that you're being offered, you know. The next line is don't get impatient and start playing crappy hands. Stick with your better hands and position and good spots. I know that recently I was playing uh, the first tournament in my tourney prep, live tournament preparation. I was dealt a five so many times. Queen five, jack five, eight five, uh, nine five offsuit over and over again. And I started to get tempted, but I forced myself not to play those. And I actually went pretty deep, made the money, um, tripled up on my buying, you know, $60 buying, walked out with 180. So it was pretty good, but I was able to do that because I was just paying attention, making the best decisions and staying away from all those crappy hands that I just kept getting dealt over and over, you know, and this is something to keep in mind. Everybody gets card dead in tournaments and you keep getting dealt one big card with a low card off suit or two low cards off suit, or even like a six, three suited. Don't play those just because it's the best looking hand you've seen in the past hour. Stay smart, Pick good spots and play in position. The next thing on my document is it says in position on ace high flops, bet out on the flop to steal and to rep the ace for a double barrel. Oftentimes we all know this um, when that ace comes and you don't have an ace, you're often seeing monsters under the bed and you think your opponent has an ace. So a lot of the weak players in multi-table tournaments, especially at the smaller buy-ins like the Colossus is 565. Hopefully there'll be a lot of scared players and they will be folding readily to that ace on the flop if they don't have one. The next line says getting deep, Take a breath and know your tournament status. Online, you can easily see how close you are to the bubble. Listen to the floor staff and look for signs of how close to the money you are. 
Now, this is key, actually. In those bigger field tournaments, I mean, I don't know how many players will play in 1A uh, of the Colossus, day 1A, but I think last year it was like 1,500 or 2,000. And you can't really tell easily that you're so close to the money or not just by looking around at the field because you've still got 50 tables around you and there might be tables in another room too, you know? So what you have to do is listen to the floor staff when they're talking to each other, when they're conversing, they're going to be talking about things like, hey, we're going to get to the money soon. You can even ask them ahead of time, when do you think we're going to get to the money? They'll tell you, hey, level 20, level 21 is last year where we hit it just about every time. So pay attention to the levels, pay attention to what the floor staff are saying, and um, you want to know when that bubble is coming because the bubble is when you either need to hold tight and hold on to try to make the money, or if you're mid-stacked or bigger stack, you can try to t start taking advantage and chipping up during the bubble against those players who do not want to bust out on the bubble. Alrighty, just breaking in here real quick. You can find my book, How to Study Poker Volume 1, in every format on Amazon.com. It's an ebook, it's a paperback, and it's also audiobook, baby. So please leave an honest review and send the review to me. Later on in the episode, I'll be reading a review from one of the purchasers online at Amazon. Let me know that you left a review, and I'd love to read it on air to give you a little shout out for supporting the show. And if you don't know, and I'm sure you do, your reviews help to spread the word. The more reviews there are, the more likely people will see it, notice it, and uh, hopefully make that purchase. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. Got a few more things to cover on my Evernote document here. The next line says, think about the opponent's range and the board before you fold a pair. I'm often too quick to fold a weak pair. And this is totally true. Um, you know, I kind of uh, I just, if I have a third pair or fourth pair or even like an under pair, I'm often too quick to fold. Uh, I need to be paying attention. Think about my opponent's range and how it how it hits the board. And also, this line didn't say it, but pay attention to bet sizing. I've seen too many times where... Uh, some of the weaker players, they bet big when they have a good hand. They bet small when they try to bluff. So what I need to do is look at bet sizing as well. I'll actually add that as a line to my Evernote document. The next line says, play the player. Start with two to the left and two to the right. Know their basic style and plan to exploit them. And this is key. In most hands that you play, you're going to be involved with the two guys to your left. You know, they're going to be in the blinds. You're going to open. You're going to try to steal, whatever. Or you're going to be involved with the two guys to the right because you're in the blinds and they're often opening and trying to steal yours. So know those players first off and then slowly branch out to the left and to the right one player at a time. Hopefully, within maybe three rounds or so, you're going to have a good idea on how everybody at the table plays. But start two to the left and two to the right. The next line says, show aggression when others show weakness, but be careful when out of position. When everybody, when you're in a uh, like a multi-way pot or even heads up and everybody checks around the flop, it's a perfect time to take a stab on the turn. You'll notice a lot of the more aggressive players will wait till then to throw out bets and bluffs. Um, and you need to do the exact same when everybody shows weakness and the turn card comes something that probably didn't help many people or it's kind of inconsequential on like a jack 10, uh, eight board. And then the turn comes a deuce, but nobody bet that flop. Go ahead and lead out on the turn or bet when they all check to you. The next line says, pick on the mid-sized stacks, not the small or big stacks. And this really applies to either in the money or on the bubble. The mid-sized stacks don't want to bust out too soon, uh, especially when they have a lot of smaller stacks at the table who might bust out ahead of them. And don't pick on the big stacks because, hey, they have 100 big blinds, 80 big blinds. They don't maybe they care, but it's not that big of a deal if they lose and double you up when you're 10 or 15 big blinds kind of a thing. So pick on the mid-size stacks. And the next line is stack sizes matter. Know the stack sizes of those who already acted and those yet to act. Now, that is key. It's so easy online to see the stack sizes of everybody. You know exactly where they are. With my HUD, I see the exact number of big blinds they have in their stack. But when you're live, you have to pay a little bit more attention. Look for those big chips. Count it up real quick. Try to figure out how many big blinds they have so you know how much you're risking. The next line is, what does your opponent likely think of you? Are you a tag, knit, fish, or a lag? Because, of course, you adjust your play based on your opponent. They are going to adjust theirs based on you. So be ready to adjust to their adjustments. 
two lines left. The next one is trust your gut. If your heart is racing, your subconscious is trying to tell you something. Be present. Now, this is something specific to me, of course. There are times when my heart just starts beating. Maybe I'm trying to pull a bluff or maybe I'm trying to value bet. But for whatever reason, my heart starts racing. I know that this is when my gut is trying to tell me something. My subconscious is trying to tell me either... I'm making a bad play or I'm in danger. I need to be present and pay attention to the situation right here and think about what is the best play before I actually try to make it. And the final line is people shove very tight, but call super wide. So you've got to call extremely tight and shove reasonably tight with good aces and kings and pocket pairs. Yeah, so this line is self-explanatory. If you've ever played live MTTs, you could just think about your opponents, and this is them. They shove tight. They wait till they get down to five, six, seven big blinds before they're shoving. They look for the really good aces, the kings, the pocket pairs before they shove. But they call you super wide. They'll call with king seven offsuit, with ace deuce suited, that kind of stuff. So just keep that in mind before you get in, or when you're in that push-fold mode, keep in mind what you think they'll, they're going to call you with. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Copy this list for your own use, both online and for live MTTs. Add or subtract items to your heart's content. So make it your own and make it useful. Now it's your turn to take action and do something positive for your poker game. Now get it on! This episode isn't complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 141, where you can copy and paste this as your own Evernote document. And I've got a real quick Amazon book review from uh, somebody who just, they call themselves just Amazon customer. It's a verified purchase, so that makes me happy. The title is, Fortunately, I Find Out This Book and Immediately Purchase It. So it goes on to say, When I was looking for a new method to improve my play, I was confused how I could start and how I would organize all of what I read and watch these past several weeks. Fortunately, I found out this book and immediately purchased it. I can only say that this book is too cheap because of the complexity of material and the PDFs are very, very useful. Every beginner should read this book as a first poker book in their poker adventure. Intermediate players also would buy it or should buy it because there are plenty of interesting methods of study. Well, thank you very much, you five-star Amazon customer reviewer. I really appreciate it. If you want to show your support um, like this Amazon reviewer and you've bought the book, please leave a review of your own in Amazon. I really appreciate it. Leave an honest review. If it's five stars, great. If it's not, I understand. I'll read it and maybe I'll learn from it. Thank you so much for listening today. And if you can type in the words Smart Poker Study, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, Amazon, and YouTube. Or just send me an email to sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Alrighty, poker people. Next week in episode 142, uh, I'll either come back with another episode in the Poker MED or Poker Math MED series, or I'll come back with a tournament report and some hands played, especially if I make it in the money or if I just see some really cool hands that I want to discuss with you. Um, and word of mouth is how this show grows. So thank you very much for sharing this show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. I hope I see you at the meetup on Saturday at 2 p.m. in Las Vegas at the uh, Gold Coast Casino Bowling Alley. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.